Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Forsaken Forest, and it is a game of deduction and mystery. You're going to be playing as villagers trapped in the forest, trying to figure out what plagues them. Unfortunately for you, as some of your party members have been transformed into the evils of the forest. It's a deduction game in which you're going to be trying to escape the forest and free the village that after you get there uh, from the plague. However, the Forsaken and your party are meant to bring you to the void. The void is a place that sucks away all the powerful innocent souls and basically is a place of dark evil corruption. So you're going to be going around this board in this deduction game, kind of like werewolf, and if you reach the safe spot you win, if you reach the void you lose, and there's a bunch of other unknown spots. You'll be searching through the forest deck, playing cards from your hand in the traveler's deck, along with having your own secret role or secret identity, some of them of which are basic, others have special abilities. There's also artifact cards you can draw throughout the game, and some night cards you'll be using. This game does not require a moderator and you can go ahead and simply play it without one and you'll be adding cards to people's hands to notify them that they've been dead. It's got some cool interesting mechanics. Let's go ahead and check out all the contents for the game below. So here's the contents for the game Forsaken Forest, and as you can see, it comes with a ton of cards. We'll start off by showing you the board. It's a prototype board, so it has four different pieces, and we're going to be putting that up and showing you how it looks later. But it's going to come with a couple spaces. First, the destination locations, basic locations we've been moving around the board, the middle of the board, as well as artifact locations. Artifacts are where you're going to be drawing these cards over here. Destinations will be placed on the board itself. You can be getting tokens like these wandering tokens to be placed on the board to show where your party is and you'll be using these tokens by playing cards from this Wanderer deck. Now, as you can see all the cards here, first of all, you'll notice that these cards here are the different types of common folk, as well as the special or unique classes of common folk. You can have the basic ones, the Oracle, Cursed, Blessed, Priest, and Navigator, and you can have the Forsaken cards, as well as, as, well as the Silencer, the Shrouded, and the Coward. These are the bad guys in the game. These here are the forest action cards, and they take place once around, and different things will occur with them. These cards over here are the destination locations, in which you're going to have a lot of dead ends, as well as you're going to have two locations, such as the village, which is the good place you want to go to, and then you're going to have, of course, the void, which is the bad place where the bad guys want you to go. Uh, the artifact decks are cards you're going to be drawing when you go to these locations, and they provide two different types of things, the finder's action and a group action that will benefit the travelers along their way. You're also going to get three different different night cards in which you'll be you know, having people wake up throughout the night phases and putting these cards into players' hands. For instance, this ritual sacrifice, the Forsaken will place into other people's hands, and so on and so forth. I'll explain more later. And this is your big deck of cards where you'll be drawing from and playing from throughout the game. There's over a hundred something cards in here, so there's tons of them. You're also going to get a box for the game along with a full rule book to explain it. Let's go ahead and talk about the setup a little bit and how a turn works. The setup of the game Forsaken Forest is pretty simple. You're going to have a board that you're going to put together or probably in the actual game it'll be just a board you unfold. You're going to have all the different decks and they have their own locations. I would suggest taking the, the Wanderer deck or Traveler deck and separating into two piles because there's so many cards and just making sure that everybody can go ahead and get a hold of those. Then there's also the difficulty rating. Do you want it to be more skewed to the good guys or the bad guys? Because each card has its own rating along with the point value and you can go ahead and say okay make it a little harder for the good guys and give an extra couple points to the bad guys vice versa. It works out however you want it to and the game is going to be played just kind of like Werewolf in that aspect or Ultimate Werewolf by Ted Asbeth. You're also going to be taking the artifact decks and making sure you shuffle all the decks and place them in their all unique area, along with setting up the location cards in the middle of the board so that the bad guys can set that up, and the night cards will be set aside as well, along with your little destination mover markers. Then after you've gone ahead and set the basic setup, there's the basic night phase. The bad guys are all going to wake up and they're going to move their stuff, uh, move, the, move the locations down where they want to, and the navigator will open up and look at a location, so on and so forth. There's a bunch of different things that we're going to have. Happen. But then after that is all set up, you're going to go into the turns, the rounds of playing, which everybody's going to be drawing a card and playing an action card. I'll explain all of this in more detail down below, but just to so get a basic idea. Players are going to be trying to move to different locations by playing certain cards or discarding cards on their turn to draw a card and simply using that card maybe to just attack somebody or vote somebody, so on and so forth. And it goes like that. You can also look at other players' cards and other things similar to that, as well as going for artifacts. After everybody's turn has gone around, the round is going to end, and you're draw a card from the forest deck and see what it does. Sometimes they're good events, sometimes they're bad events. And when that happens, maybe it'll be a night phase. And if it's a night phase, then 
something unique to uh, or something simple similar to Werewolf is going to occur, in which players are going to be saving other players or looking at a player's um, card or looking at a navigational card, as well as certain uh, different object, uh, certain different uh, characters will be doing stuff. So like there's three these three cards. They're gonna be in the middle of the board when that happens. You've got the Ritual of Sacrifice, which is basically all the bad guys will wake up and place this card into somebody's hand to kill them. You've got the Shelter from Evil, which is the priest action. You can place this in somebody's hand to save them. And then you've got Entangled, which is basically the silencer, which makes me not be able to talk for the next round. And once those are all divvied up, you're going to have everybody make sure they open their eyes and reveal and see what happened. And then the round will continue. Now, not every time is a night phase, so it's going to depend on how the game goes, as well as sometimes you're going to be able to attack players just throughout the game in the day phase, as well as doing other kind of stuff. But that's a basic idea. If you get to the void, it's over and the bad guys win. If you get to the safe spot, then it's over and the good guys win. However, the game can end sooner if all the bad guys or good guys die. Let's go ahead and look at the full step of the game and a couple rounds of play. So I went ahead and set up Forsaken Forest, just the basic idea of the game. I have the locations in the middle here. I've got the starting group area right here, along with the night cards that will be used every night phase. Over here, we have got the forest deck and the artifact deck, which will be used through each, each round. And whenever these players get to here, you'll get this card. These over here are going to be the traveler deck, and you're gonna give everybody three of these cards. You're also going to have all the, loca all the characters and all the different unique abilities here. And let's go ahead and talk about these really quick. So the Oracle over here is actually going to be able to look at a single player at night to determine if they're good or bad. The Curse is actually a flip card that is a good guy that looks like a bad guy. The Blessed is a character that cannot die during the day and it will reveal themselves instead of dying. And uh, during the night he will die though. The Priest is a character that can protect somebody from dying provided they, uh, the Curse to try and kill them. And then you've got the Navigator which can look at any of the locations on the board at night. The Silencer will silence somebody for a round. The Shrouded is going to pretend like a good guy but actually be the, the bad guy in the in the group and not only that this is actually the leader of the forsaken and then you've got the coward which is going to be a character that gets to see what all the other bad guys are but the bad guys don't know he is also a bad guy and then the basic forsaken cards the basic townsfolk cards as well as all the little destination markers here you'll be using throughout the game now to start off, you're going to select different roles. And you can see on this chart here, depending on the number of players, how many Forsaken you need, how many Villagers you need, and uh, if you want it to be for the village or for the forest. So it could be two bad guys and three forest cards, or it can be one bad guy and four Villagers if you want the village to be more successful or the Forsaken to be more successful. In this game, we just go ahead and choose a couple random here. We'll go ahead and pick the Navigator, we'll go ahead and pick the Oracle, and we'll go ahead and pick the Priest, along with maybe the Shrouded and a Forsaken. We won't need anybody else, so we'll go ahead and take these aside and move them aside just like this. Then we're going to go ahead and take these cards here and shuffle them so that they are uh, hidden so in from view, so nobody knows what is what. And everybody is going to get a singular card. That will be their identity for the rest of the game. All right, so everybody's got their card. They're also going to get three cards from this deck. I've already preset these up just so it's easier. So everybody has these three cards here. And they're random from the Traveler's deck. And at that point, everybody's going to look at their, their character cards. These are hidden, but I'll go ahead and reveal them for you just so that we have a good idea of how the game is going to play. So nobody actually knows these, though. All right, now that is done. Now we're going to go through the night phase of the game because all the basic stuff is set up. Make sure there's enough room around each destination location so you can put a card there. And the first thing that happens is everybody's going to close their eyes. And then if there is a shrouded character, which is this guy here, he's going to wake up and he's going to take his card and actually go ahead and switch it with a villager card. So he's actually still a bad guy and, and he's going to actually reveal himself to the bad guys, but everybody is going to think he's a villager throughout the game. Then all the rest of the Forsaken are going to wake up as well. So these both of these characters here, or the bad guys, are going to take this village, uh, this uh, location deck here, destination deck here, and determine where they want to place stuff. So maybe they want the void to be over here and they want the village to be over here. And these are the only guys that are awake, so they're kind of determining where they want all the locations to be. All the rest of these little cards are going to be basically uh, blank destinations or dead ends. So as the bad guys, they're trying to get people to the uh, bad place, which is the void here. And they know that, and they want to keep the other the players away from the good location, the village. So that is that. Then after that, the Forsaken will go to sleep. 
uh, and the Forsaken are going to raise their hand, and if there's a coward in play, the coward is going to see their the, the bad guys along with himself, but they won't know who he is. And then and the coward will close his eyes, the navigator is going to wake up if there is one, which would be this guy here. Going to look at one of the locations, see what it is. Oh, a dead end. Okay, so now he knows that's not a location they want to go to. And then he's going to close his eyes. The curse is going to wake up if there is one, and he's going to go ahead and flip over his card. So he's going to appear as the bad guy. He's a blue guy that appears as a bad guy. And um, basically he's going to be with the good guys, though. And if a good guy sees him, he could be in trouble because they might think he's a bad guy. After that, everybody is going to close their eyes, count to 15 seconds, and then wake up. And everybody's going to see all the destinations have been placed. These night cards are not going to be used until a later round. And then you're going to go ahead and select a player to begin the game. When you begin the game, you're basically going to draw a card from the, the deck, this, this white deck here, the, um, the navigation deck or whatever, and you're going to select a card from your hand. And there's tons of things you can do. You can forge a path, these are the basic ones, which are called Wander, or you can play a special ability card, which is, and they're all slow actions to start with. Uh, choose a player, that player draws two cards, or forge a path. Uh, both of these are slow actions, you can only choose to do one of them. So maybe this character will want to go ahead and discard this card, and choose a player, meaning himself, to draw two cards. Ooh, okay, a ton of forge a path cards. And after that, he can play a fast action, along with anybody else can play fast actions as well. And in the deck, there's a ton of different kinds of cards. So this is a fast action. Choose a player to peek at that player's hand and then simply draw a card. Um, and here's another one. Revive a player who is on death's doorstep, which I'll explain in a second. Then after this player is done, the next player is going to get a chance to go. And maybe he'll want to forge up to two paths. Uh, the paths this way must be connected to one another, so that's pretty cool. So he'll go ahead and play that card after he draws his card. And he'll simply forge a path by taking these pieces here and placing them down. Now this is the priest, so he doesn't know where to go, so he's just going to pick randomly or talk amongst the group to decide. Whenever you place a, a path, it doesn't matter where you place it as long as it's adjacent to another path, but however he played that card so both of these paths have to connect. Otherwise, though, it wouldn't matter. The navigator will get a chance to go by drawing a card, and uh, he could play Forge Two Paths as well. He can take an additional uh, two actions this turn and draw a card, so he'll go ahead and do that. That's a fast action, though. He has to probably wait for that, so he can do a slow action. Forge Two Paths first. One and two. And then he can go ahead and play his fast action, which is to take an extra two actions this turn as well as drawing a card. And he'll go ahead and play Forge Path, and maybe another Forge a Path. Again, play an extra two actions, so that's pretty useful. And he can place it, maybe he wants to place it right here, maybe he wants to place it right here. Now the navigator knows, however, that this is a dead end, or yeah, this is a dead end because he looked at it, so maybe he wouldn't want to place it there, so maybe he actually place it over here instead. And then so on and so forth. The next player is going to get to go, and he's, he's, this is the bad guy, and the bad guy knows that the evil destination is right here, so he might try and get the group this way. But the thing is, you got to be careful as a bad guy. You don't want to just try and say, oh, this is the way we need to go, unless you actually have some kind of information. But he can simply go ahead and play, draw a card. What does he get here? Another forge a path. Okay. And he can simply forge a path this way if he wants, or whatever. So I think that'd be a good idea for a bad guy, try and get them to the evil spot there. And he's going to end his turn. The next player is going to get a chance to go. And, ooh, forge a path again. That's probably a good idea. Ooh, 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 ooh. Placing this here. That's really close to the location. you got to be careful. But also, after that happens, the entire round is done. You're going to take this forest deck here uh, and make sure it's good and shuffled. And you're going to go ahead and flip over a card. What does it do? This says, at the end of the turn, go to the night cycle. So we're going to do the night cycle now, which is pretty cool. Now, the night two night cycle is going to be the same as all of the rest of the nights in a cycle, basically. So it'll be night, day, night, day. And the way it works is like this. Everybody is going to close their eyes, and the navigator, once again, is going to wake up and look at a new location. Probably want to look at this one. He now knows this is the void. He knows these players are taking them down to the void. So he has to try and warn the good guys and let them know that this is not the place they want to go. And then the oracle is going to wake up, peek it at a face-down card if there is one, uh, if, if there is a character that he can look at, or if there is an uh, oracle in the game. Then the priest is going to wake up, and this is where the knight cards come into play, these cards right here. And he's going to shelter somebody from evil. So maybe he thinks that, oh, I don't know, that the priest is a good guy, so he's going to shelter this guy from evil by placing this card into that player's hand. Now a good way in the game for the knight phase is to make sure everybody has their hand of cards just like this, so nobody knows how many cards are in their hand. It's a good way of not keeping count of the cards. So when this card is added to their hand, no one knows it's added except for the player when he looks at it. Then the Forsaken are going to all wake up, so these guys will wake up, and they're going to place a Ritual of Sacrifice on somebody, and which is basically going to kill that player, so maybe they want to put it on the Priest there. After that, the Silencer will go ahead and wake up, if there is one, and take the Silencing action and place it on somebody, maybe this guy right here. 
And then after that, everybody's going to, uh, the, the Forsaken and the Silencer are gonna go back to sleep, and 50 seconds later, everybody wakes up. Everybody's gonna look at their hand of cards after which reach this point and see what they got. Ritual of Sacrifice, oh, but he's got Shelter from Evil. So he's gonna reveal these cards and say, hey, I almost died, but somebody saved me. Thank you, thank you, priest, or whatever. And then the Navigator's gonna be like, uh-oh, I'm silenced. So he's gonna play his card out. Now people know he's silenced and he can't say anything. So he knows this location is bad, but he can't say anything now. Uh, which is a great job from the other silencer. They'll look at their hands, nothing will have happened, and we'll move these cards away. And the rounds will continue. Players are gonna continue playing cards, moving to locations, until something happens. The bad guys are all going to end up dying due to a bunch of cards in here that can do that. Or maybe all the good guys die, or in the most likely scenario is the bad guys get the good guys to the location that is evil and the bad guys win, or vice versa, the good guys make it to the village area, wherever this guy is, there's the village, and then the good guys would win. And that is the basic idea for the game. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So before we get into the review, I wanna talk about a significant amount of different cards from all the different decks because there's a ton of cards in the game and there's a ton of unique cards. First of all, just the Wanderer deck alone has about 150 cards and most of them, I think there's three uh, three cards per each unique card in the deck other than just the Path, Forge a Path cards. So let's go ahead and talk about that first. Uh, there's the basic Wander, which is going to forge you a path. Then you've got slow actions and fast actions, right? You play a slow action, then you play a fast action. Other people can play a fast action on your turn. Here's another slow one. Choose a player, peek at that player's roll card. That's pretty good. Soul inspection. You've also got cast suspicion, which actually takes players to the gallows. The gallows is basically just like werewolf you're going to be doing during the daytime phase where it's a vote of yes or no. Now, you're never going to instantly kill anybody in this game, though. You're just going to send them to death's doorstep. And the way the gallows works is the player that is being sent to the gallows is going to get to choose three people to ask them questions, and they're going to have a little debate. And after that, people are going to do their yes or no thing. If yes, the player is okay. If no, the player goes immediately to death's doorstep. Now, death's doorstep works like this. That means you're going to die. You're literally right there on death's doorstep, but there is ways you can survive, such as playing a fast action like Miraculous Revival. You can play this on yourself, or you can play it on another player. Oh, you may not revive yourself, so you can only play it on another player, so you have to ask other people to try and save you, but make them think that you're on, uh, they're on your team. Uh, you got cards like Backstab, which are fast action, you can choose a player to make them discard their entire hand. Place in the Pillory, choose a player, that player might not take any actions during this cycle. And then Timely Intervention, you may play, only play Timely Intervention when a player becomes the choice of a card. Forbid that card's choice, that card now chooses you instead. It's a very useful, but there's a ton of these cards in the game and a ton of variety, a ton of uniqueness. And as you saw, even just in the little playthrough we did that there was quite a few cards you could have chosen from. You're also gonna be getting these artifact cards and there's two different types. You got finder's action and you got group action. Finder's action means that the player who played the uh, token onto the location is gonna get that card's effect or an ability. And the group action means it just instantly happens and it affects the entire group. Let's talk about a couple finder's actions. The first one says revive a player who is on death's doorstep. That player discards their their entire hand, you may not revive yourself. So it's a good card you can actually use for later. Uh, you choose a player, peek at that player's roll card, shoot, peek at the destination card of your choice, choose a player, that player is now on death's doorstep, forge a path on the excavation site parallel to this one. Uh, then you got the, these ones over here, which are the group actions. Forbid the forest from taking its next turn. So the forest card is not going to be drawn. Each player draws two cards, and then Wolf Companion, my favorite one. It basically puts a wolf into play during the night phase. If the, if the accursed or forsaken were to choose, uh, not the cursed, sorry, the forsaken were to choose somebody to die, instead the wolf is going to die in its stead. In fact, I wouldn't even mind a little, little miniature of this because I think that's cool. Uh, then you got the forest deck, right? And the forest actions, one third of the deck is going to be sending you to the night phase. You're normally going to go to the night phase where the bad guys can try and kill somebody and the priest and all of them get to do their own unique actions. But some things, sometimes other things will happen, like dead silence. As long as this card isn't remains in play, players cannot speak. Uh, violent plague, each player discards two cards from their hand. Mass confusion, each player passes their hand to the player at their left. And malevolent barricade, choose two destination territories at random. As long as this card remains in play, you cannot forge paths to those locations. And then evil unbound, play two additional cards from the forest deck. And of course, the encroaching darkness. This is the one that takes you to the night cycle of the game. So there's quite a lot of cards. I only went into a little detail because I want you guys to be able to experience all the different types of cards in the game. But that is the basic idea of the game. Continue playing until all the bad guys are dead, 
all the good guys is it, and you make it to one of the different locations. All right, now let me tell you what I think about it. Forsaken Forest is a hidden role game, which means if you don't like those kind of games, this is not going to change your mind at all. The game still has hidden roles, people are backstabbing each other, people are playing cards on each other, so on and so forth. However, if you do like deception games and you want something unique, something different that involves a board that actually has you moving around it, has you drawing and playing cards, this one is spectacular. We really, really enjoyed this game. There are a couple flaws in it as far as certain things are, can be gamey, but they're really easily revised, such as when you're playing the night phase, somebody puts a card in your hand, people can wake up and see that. So you want to make sure you place your cards like this. Little things like that, nothing too bothersome, because once we figured it out, we're like, oh, okay, that's what we can do to make to so so solve that problem. Also, the game can end quickly, or it can take a very long time. It just depends on who you trust and how many players there are. The more players in the game, the longer it's going to take, though. However, the paths are going to be forged, so it's not going to be like an extremely long game of Werewolf. This game is basically Werewolf, but it adds cards, it adds locations, it adds destinations, and it adds artifacts. All of these things are super cool, because it feels like just an addition and an expansion to that, and the game has a lot of potential for expansion. I really like the fact that there is a ton of unique cards in this deck. In fact, there are so many of these cards and I was so surprised with all the different things I could do on my turn that it gave me so much choice in one of these basic trader style games. What I originally thought was just going to be like a werewolf clone where you moved around the board a little bit, it's not just like that. There is a lot of cards that change the way the game is going to be played. Not only that, but I also thought as a good guy that it would be more difficult to determine why people are going this way, why they want to go this way, or maybe it's just all random, right? But slowly throughout the game, I started realizing that that was not the case, and I could start to see different people's flaws in logic, or maybe flaws in my own logic, and throughout several playthroughs, I was like, oh, this is a good strategy, or wait, no, that could be a good strategy, and there was these different perceptions as how you want to move around the board, and to be careful. So, for instance, one of the uh, bad guys in my last game was playing, and he's like, oh, well, we can go to either of these two locations, they're the closest destination. I was like, oh, that's a good idea, not thinking about the fact that they had been leading us there the entire way, and one of the those locations was bad, one was the dead end. And either way, it'd be like, oh, well, if it didn't go to the dead end, you, or if it went to the dead end, you go, oh, well, let's go to this location. It's the next closest. It's a good bad guy strategy. But not only that, what's really cool too is the entire playboard is basically the space in which you provided these little uh, these little foot locations, the destinations. So you can place it anywhere you want on the board. So if you disagree with somebody, you can say, I don't want to go that way. I'm going to go this way. But disagreeing from the pack could cost you and it could make your friends dis, uh, dis disapprove of your actions. What's also additionally interesting is the fact that you can change the difficulty in the game. You want to play it more against the for more for the forest or more for the villagers. It's up to you, and it does make a difference in how you play the game. And I really like that. It's tons of fun. The base game is simple. It's really easy to understand as you go along, and it fills the the, the interesting niche or category of a hidden trader game. If you haven't played a hidden trader game, maybe something like Resistance would be an easy one to start with, but this one would be a next upgrade to uh, the next level of that. And I really, really do enjoy this game. The artwork is pretty, I mean, artwork is really cool. I really like the artwork in this game. It has a lot of cool things. It does have a nice theme where you do feel like you're going around in a hidden forest and you don't know where you're going to be at. Uh, the replayability is crazy in this game. There's, so, there, there's never going to be another game that you play twice. And uh, the other thing I can say is continue to add more characters. I love deception games where there's more and more different types of roles, but what is here is definitely enough. If you like hidden role, you like trader deception, you want something different, something unique, where you're moving around a board and playing cards, a little bit of take that, a little bit of deception, you're going to be interested in Forsaken Forest, and I definitely suggest getting it. This one is staying in my collection, and it's right about there for my stamp of approval. If we just had a couple of the little little things like the, um, a couple of little things on the deck or whatever solved, or the way the, the, the wonkiness of playing the cards at night, or people having to move around, because that, that's an issue too, is at night, if you're all sitting down, or somebody's sitting on a couch with another player, having to get up and move the cards on the board can be a little bit, you know, you have to basically satisfy those conditions so that people don't hear you as you're moving around the board doing stuff. But I can see how that's also in other games too, like One Night Revolution, where that happens as well. And maybe people can solve that by thumping on the table. But either way, it's an excellent game. I definitely suggest you taking take a look at Forbidden or Forsaken Forest. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out some of the videos. You need to like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out Forsaken Forest, the trader deduction game with a little bit of movement, a little bit of take that. It's kind of got a mix of everything. And check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. That's the blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. We got two new giveaways coming out, or if they're not already out, by AEG, along with a Tabletop Takeover and a couple other sponsors. You can go to our website, unfiltergamer.com slash board game giveaways and check out all those. As well as looking at our friend's site, we've got tons of board, uh, board game giveaways as well. Everythingboardgames.com, the Giveaway Geek, and the Cardboard Stacker, Ferdinand, my personal friend. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as 
always, I greatly appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Subscribe, subscribe.